year, St. Alex family lost a legend. Lawrence Coleman, known to friends and family as Peaches, was a former student and then golf coach for the Falcons. It took the school to some dizzying heights. Six HBCU national championships, including five Division II crowns, seven CIAA titles. The Falcons even won the HBC overall title in 1993 and capped it with a visit to the White House. Yes, that one. <laughs> Joining me now to reminisce are his daughters, Kimberly and Stephanie, uh, along with former player and current St. Augs golf coach, Julius Wells. Thank you all for taking the time. And I'll start with you, Stephanie, here. What was it about your father that just made him stand out the way that he did with not just the players, but with the student body at large? I, I'm not sure. He just loves St. Augs, and he loves the kids. I could tell he would do things for kids that, you know, were not his that they didn't have. He would always give back to the kids. Um, a lot of them have posted and said, you know, he's treated me like his own. It is truly an honor um, to know that he touched so many lives the way he did. Um, homecoming is a big thing on campus, the HBCUs. Uh, um, we had a pretty large tailgate because all of his friends um, come down. He would sit at one end of the tent and people would just come by mm -hmm. and show their gratitude to him the whole time. He remembers everybody. He, I mean, everyone is associated with where they're from. So he'll say, oh, that's Kevin from D.C. or that's so-and-so from High Point. I mean, he remembered the, the, guy, the people there. Mm -hmm. yeah, I will admit, that is a skill that I struggle with today. And, and Julius, it's, it's not just the success, which is amazing when you look at it, but he did it in the early 70s, and golf was... Well, it was much more uh, closed off, uh, let's say, for some people here. I mean, there were no Tiger Woods promoting it. You're talking about guys like uh, Charlie Sifford, uh, Lee Elder, Calvin Pete, Jim Dent. Coach Coleman was paradigm to me, man. He, he was a, I've learned, he was a bricklayer. It was very encouraging to me to, and, and realize the passion that he had, that, you know, I see why this, you know, why this man is really pushing for inclusion, for one, in this game, but for you know, HBCUs and, and all the, the golf programs and the golf players that come out of HBCUs to have that same opportunity. And he's actually told me himself, you know, how, you know, nothing sets you apart but you. You know, I don't care if they're Division One or you're Division Two, you still have to hit your golf ball. He still has to hit his golf ball. So that right there, let me know it's all on how – or what I make out, out of it. And, you know, the time I put into it is what I can get out of it. And I got to know, tell me, what was he doing that got so much out of you all to have so much success with that team? My experience, it didn't take much for him. One thing I've learned that he would say to me and others, you know, as golfers, we all come out and try to, when we play that, we try to, you know, blame it on whether the wind, <laughs> the, the rain, uh, you know, the greens are too fast. They were too slow. And so we would come in and say these, and, you know, we'll sit there and he'll sit there and listen to you. And then he'll just respond and say, the guy that whoever was leading played in those same conditions. So what's your excuse? And so from that point, there's nothing you can say, but I need to go and work on my game and, and get better. So he eliminated a lot of excuses and and drove you just to be better, work harder, to get to where you want to be and get to where they are, the guys that you're trying to be. Now, the list of things that his teams have accomplished, I mean, they're just incredible. I mean, his teams made it to the White House. Just stop. Stop right there. I mean, what was he like to deal with, honestly, with that much success? He never <laughs> bragged about his stuff. He never bragged. He bragged to us. He asked us for my autograph, but he wouldn't tell a stranger. He wouldn't tell his friends. He'd get mad if we did. Um, especially with Facebook now, we put him on there for something. Nope, don't put me on there. Don't, yeah. <laughs> I think his biggest, um, maybe his proudest moment was getting inducted into the CIAA Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that went over the black, um, his, you know, the black college, the PGA, the Black Golfers Hall of Fame, only because those people in the CIAA are people he's coached with for 30 some years. So those were his friends. You know, uh, that, that also makes a lot of sense. He, he sees those people. So that would mean that much more to him. Now, now one of the things I've heard is coach, uh, coach really liked to have some fun with folks. And, and cause I think people know about his sense of humor. Right. Um, even, uh, you know, our college friends that would go home with us on the weekends, 
They'd be like, oh my goodness, we never knew your dad was so funny. I guess the people thought he was quiet and he really was not. Because <laughs> I out in public, he may be quiet at first, but not really. You know, yes, he was a prankster. I mean, he loved to, you know, to keep the atmosphere, you know, nice and, you know, jolly, I guess. He always, you know, until it was time she didn't, you know, he needed to really crack down on us. But we, um, we would travel and, you know, we had an assistant coach at the time that we always made jokes on the assistant coach because at the time the assistant coach didn't eat pork. So we would go to restaurants and, or we'll wake up in the morning and, you know, we meet down t- down uh, stairs, you know, for breakfast and he'll take a plate of bacon and sit it right in front of him, take a picture, you know, and send it out to everybody. <laughs> send out to everybody. Uh, uh, Jack Edgerton was eating bacon and pork, <laughs> so he, he would always he would always tease him on eating ribs. He'll throw a slab of ribs in front of him, or, or put some barbecue sauce on him and <laughs> take a picture. <laughs> so he, he was a prankster. He was a prankster. <laughs> uh, now you know what you know. He's wrong for that because I know he knows some great barbecue places too, man. That did wrong for that one, but funny nonetheless. And now one of the the things that really amazes me I mean he spent 37 years his entire coaching career just one school never left you can't tell me with that kind of success he didn't at least have offers the question is why stay I think it's just a family I mean I, I honestly think it was just that was home for him um, he loved his school Anybody that talked to him knows if you say, oh, what school do you support in, in Raleigh, um, North Carolina? You like Carolina or Duke? He's going to say St. All, all day. All day. You know, we always say something about being a Falcon. But he was passionate. He was very passionate about St. Augustine's university and college. Um, it's just, in, in speaking for myself, just the intimate environment that's there on campus. Um, the love you get, whether from your professors, your coaches, the administrative office, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a family. And he's fostered that every day, every year, you know, whether it was for, for supporting the golf program, whether it was for supporting the football or basketball, whether it was for supporting the band, whether it was for supporting the business department. That's how Coach Coleman was. Even after what, 15 years of retirement, he would call. He knew it was clockwork. He knew when tournaments was. So I would, I got to a point where I was expecting it. We finish our final round and I'm getting in the van to leave and the phone rings. I said, that's coach. And there he goes, how'd you guys do? It didn't matter. He knew where it was. He supported us and he always was there. And that was just coach Coleman. All right. Got to ask. I'll be that guy. Peaches. How do you get that nickname? Something crazy or what? A couple stories. <laughs> One was because he was so young that he only had peach fuzz because he was so young and the guys started calling him that. So he's from Georgia. He's from Georgia. So that's the other one that came from Georgia. From Peach County, Georgia, at that Fort Valley, Georgia. I, I like it. It fits, you know? It just does fit. But t- tell me, ladies, what is it you all are going to remember when I say peaches to you right now? We both are graduates of St. Augustine's College also. Um, we grew up literally on campus. Um, when he first started, he was the dormitory director for freshman boys, men. And um, so every freshman young man went through his dormitory at the time. And we went to elementary school just down the road at Mary Phillips. So we would walk the campus every day after school. That was our after school program. <laughs> <laughs> I told his friend, I said he had two um, golf picker uppers, golf ball picker uppers, because he would hit golf balls every day, and my sister would, and I would have to go pick them up. <laughs> that may be why I didn't pick up golf until later in life. <laughs> and we were so silly. we run them back. Like, oh, look what we found. <laughs> and my mother said after that last trip when we almost turned the car over and we were loud, he said, okay, oh, can't go anymore. <laughs> Oh, I had way too much fun talking with him. Thank you.